happen to him. So, amen. So praise God. I believe we are live on Facebook. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Uh, Partake of Church of Christ Ministries, where our pastors, Pastor Michael J. Isaac Sr. and First Lady Angela Isaac. And uh, again, we are, our topic today is we're touching on prayer doing a little pop quiz. So you're just in time. Uh, you, you, um, if you want to participate, you can put it in the chat if you think you know the answer uh, uh, or in the comments if you think you know the answer. And also, if you want to join us in the classroom, you can do so by going to our Facebook page and just uh, go to the, the link and join us in the classroom. We'd love to have you. All right. So all right, anybody else? Anybody else? So is, is, is prayer optional? Do we have an option to pray or not to pray? Yeah. That's the next question. Come on, these ain't hard questions. Anybody can answer that. Is it an option? Is it optional? Hello? Yeah, prayer is optional. optional. Ain't nobody forcing you. You better pray for your situation. No, it's up to you. Well, if you look at it that way, it's, it's, yeah, op it's, not, it's not optional. It's not optional. It's, it, as this says, you know, where there's an absence of prayer, there's an absence of, absence of power. So if you don't want no power, then you're going to say it's optional. So, mm -hmm. but it's not like you, you, in your in your definition that nobody's forcing you to. So, you know, that's that's a different story. But when it comes to us as born again believers and we want a, a, a powerful prayer life, we want we want we want to see God moving in our life and in our situations, then it's not optional. We got to spend time in prayer. We got to see God for those because a lot of those things we cannot do on our own. That's why up here it says it's the ultimate indication of trust in the Heavenly Father. Only in prayer do we surrender our problems. So if we're going to hold on to our problems and think that we're going to, we can fix it on our own, then we're making prayer optional. But if we realize that we need prayer and we, and that we can't deal with these situations on our own, then we have to surrender that situation unto the Lord and leave it there. Where it says pray without speech. I didn't know we was just talking about the born again believers, but it's optional for people that's not born again. I don't think they're going to be thinking about prayer anyway, if they don't really surrender to God. And you're absolutely right. Because most of the time, man, we can put ourselves in that shoes because we wasn't always say when we got into a problem, when we had a situation in our life, we thought of everything possible that we can to fix it. And if it didn't get fixed, it didn't get fixed. And a lot of times we made matters worse. But as we as we learn, as we got saved and learned and grew uh, in Christ, we realized that without God, that we can do nothing. So uh, he said for us to cast our cares upon him because he, uh, because he cares for us. So so where there is frequently frequency of prayer, there will be a continued display of God's power. So. So what happens? All right, don't do that again. So what happens? I uh, did that last time. <laughs> uh, what happens the moment we decide or realize that we have to we have to spend time in prayer? What happens? What are some of the things that happens? But while you're praying, while you're praying, or before you pray, but once you determine that prayer is important and that you got to pray, some things start to happen. Uh, well, it depends on whether it could be good or bad. Because, it, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, prayer, this is, this is God open opens the door, He makes a way out of no way. And mm -hmm. it could be in that aspect, or it could be. Things or the enemy get in the way. You we could say the enemy, but you get sleepy while you read. Or, I mean, while you're praying, or or you you're not making enough time like you should to pray. Or, you know, um, but you know that the 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 blessings come when you start praying. And, and I mean, it depends on which way you're going with it. <laughs> on your question, and that, and that's true. But but when we if we look at what the uh, you know, this is literally, I mean, literally an open book test because the answer's right 
<laughs> uh, it says our spiritual battle begins. So like, as you say, uh, missionary Pat, you know, things start to, to happen. The enemy gets mad. He starts to, uh, you know, throw things at you, you know, um, and it gives them some examples of how sometimes, you know, you get the, you know, you know, job, re job responsibilities increase, the children, you know, start acting up and, you know, all these different things come about where it, you know, the enemy wants to pull you away from your made up mind to, to spend time in prayer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. not only that, um, we are our own worst enemy when it comes to, to certain things like that. Um, just, I don't know why this thing is acting that way. I pulled it into another uh, app, but anyway, so it talked about, you know, the carnal mind, you know, you know how we can make excuses, right? We, we tend to make excuses about a lot of things while we can't do things. And, and, uh, some of us are better than others. But uh, but but we will do that. We will make up all kinds of reasons why we can't spend time in prayer, you know, and, and before you know it, the whole day is gone. And because the whole day is gone now, guess what? You didn't get a chance to spend time in prayer. I mean, quality time in prayer. Not, not just to thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Lord, bless my family. Bless my, uh, you know, bless my, my children. And amen. You know, um, I just pray somebody's prayer. But anyway, um, <laughs> but <laughs> that's not really quality time in prayer. Um, you know, God hears our prayers, but again, we want to spend time in prayer. So moving on to the pop quiz. If I can get this, this, this screen to act right. I don't know why I want to act funny tonight. Um, all right. You guys can see that, right? So, again, we saw this prayer wheel. It's a devotional exercise. You know, it's not something that, you know, saying your prayer has to be done this way or you have to spend five minutes each in every category or even use these categories. But it's a good, it's a good model for prayer based off of the Lord's prayer or shall we say the disciples' prayer. And, again, after using these steps, you know, you can develop your own, um, you know, system you know, um, you know, you don't want to, you, you don't have to use this system, uh, you know, or this program, but you can develop your own. The, the object is to encourage you and to help you develop a prayer life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So praise, praise the adoration of uh, the act of divine, divine adoration. So what is praise? Pay me no mind. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get my screen over to the uh, other side while you guys are, are thinking of that answer. What is praise? <laughs> praise is lifting God up, praising Him, praising God, giving Him a, uh, giving Him His His glory. Anybody else? Nobody else. Um, well, from here it says that you said it's open book, right? Yeah, it's open book. If I can get to it, <laughs> um, here we go. All right. So it's it's, it's vocal. It's um. The first, it says the first praise is vocal adoration of God. Hey, you get an A plus on that, Missionary Pat. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> But yes, that's what praise is. In, in Psalms 50 and 23, it says, God declared through the psalmist whose offering praise glorifies me. And that's what we're talking about. When we talk about hallowing, uh, hallowing, when Jesus said, hallow be thy name, you know, he's speaking of an act of reverence or to sanctify. And it goes on to speak of that as, as a divine worship, our divine worship, which is praise and, and which is what we know as adoration. The act of vocal adoration is important because it implies we acknowledge God as God. Amen. So waiting. We all have different definitions of waiting. So what do you what do you think what this as this author here is, is speaking of waiting that we talked about a couple of times already? We, we talked about this a little bit last week. I got a new wrinkle on it. You got to iron it out, man. <laughs> I'm going to use some starch. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, what you got, Pastor? <laughs> um, 
So the word waiting comes from the root word wait, right? And also you think about a waiter in a restaurant, the waiter in the restaurant serves. So mm -hmm. sometimes people think when it's read in the Bible to wait. This wait means to wait and occupy. In fact, some scriptures say occupy. Mm -hmm. Occupation comes from that word, right? And that still uh, shows service or working. So when it says my, my soul waiteth upon God, my soul anticipates my God, my, my soul uh will receive it. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. It's still an action thing. So when I look at what does it mean to wait, um, I'm going a little further than the author here, is you're doing something. Mm -hmm. you're, you're doing something towards God that is number one, pleasing, and it's unto God. And you're doing what God has called for you to do, and that is to occupy or serve. Mm -hmm. That's good, that, and I, I like the way you when you when you mention the word occupy, um, you know, because when when you the scripture you use those they, that uh, my soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. So, what what was it? What does it mean for them to watch for the morning? That means they're waiting or they're occupying their time waiting for something to happen. Right. So here the author is talking about the keenest sense, the keenest attention. In other words, our most alert frame of mind, you know, so that, so we're waiting for something to happen. We're, we're waiting on the Lord and it, it speaks of a, a silent soul surrender. Yes. And not, not to the point of we're in a, as it says that we're drifting off into a daydream, we are alert and we're waiting for something to happen. We're waiting for God to, to, to move in a situation or we, 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 you know, uh, the, it goes on to even say in another part, uh, it's like, uh, uh, and I can't even think of the words until I see it in, in the next part, but again, uh, that's, that's good. Anybody else? All right. This is this is uh this is whoever can answer this one will get two stars. Confession, the act of declar uh, declared admission. So what is confession? So uh, no, less than my less than my else. Confession, admitting. <laughs> admitting what? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you just lost the star there, D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> means to, and in our sins and to agree with God. To agree with God, and I, like Deacon said, to admit uh, admit your guilt. I mean, you know, that's the first part of confession. We can't even be saved unless we confess that we're a sinner. Mm -hmm. So, if we want, if we, you know, if we, if we want God to forgive us of our sins, we got to first admit that we are sinners and that we have committed a sin. So. Um, but it says, uh, you know, we are agreeing with God concerning the sin in our lives as revealed through his word by the Holy Spirit. At no other time in prayer does the believer look so carefully at his own spiritual growth as during confession. So you're basically making a, a spiritual evaluation of yourself uh, during that time. And the bottom line is you might as well admit it because God already knows. God they absolutely knows. To hide nothing. You know, um, but God already knows, so you, we might as well come clean. You know. Um, all right, so let me see if I can jump over to the next one without this thing acting kind of crazy again. Yeah, it jumped all the way to number. Uh, well, are we on number seven? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get 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 there. Okay, here we go. Maybe this is it. I got to keep moving this thing out the way. No, nah, you weren't that far down. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm trying to get back to uh, where I was. Okay. I'm going to have to do this on, on Word the next time, so that way I can uh, be able to uh, maneuver this a lot better, because this thing is acting crazy. What you doing on? This is a PDF, and I saved it in, in uh, 
my book. Ah. Uh, yeah. Try it this way. Come on. Okay, we did that. Confession, we just did. All right, so. We're so doing number four. We're on number four? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave it just like this. Hopefully, we can get through it. Yeah. All right, so number four, um, scripture prayer. So scripture prayer talked about, um, you know, how important it is to add uh, scripture in our prayer, to seek to bring God's word directly into our daily prayer. So to neglect God's word is to neglect God's power. And I'm going to skip over this far as a question. The secret to receiving answer to prayers lies in, it lies in how the Christian applies God's words during prayer. Do we apply God's words to our prayer? And I do. I don't know anybody else. I, I do because, you know, ministering God's word back to him mm -hmm. is, is very important, right? Not only do when we minister the word back to God, God will also uh, give us the deeper revelation that's already there in his word when we minister it back to us. It, it stays consecrated in our hearts. That's what I believe. Uh, when, we, when we pray God's word back to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And think about this, it, it, you know, the book kind of talks about even deeper, you know, and I love courtroom dramas. I don't know about y'all, you know, movies that are, have courtroom in it and you got the lawyers going back and forth and, you know, uh, and they're presenting their case. Right. And, and in your prayer, you're actually presenting the case unto the Lord because you, you, you're 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 either asking or you have a petition that you're making, you're bringing before the Lord or you're interceding on behalf of somebody else. And, you know, uh, or even for the loss or whatever the situation may be. But to bring God's words back to him, you're actually just like an attorney in a courtroom presenting your case and you're using the God's word to present your case. What, what other word could you use to help mm -hmm. present your case other than God's words? It's his words. Um, and uh, I, I like the way they presented that because again, you know, you're using God's words to, to uh, get answers to your prayer. You're not making up something on your own and you're not asking amiss. As James said, you're actually using God's words uh, according and sincerely, sincerely uh, as we, I think in, in our petition, they talked about sincere prayer. All right, so watching, watching the act of mental alertness. So here Jesus is, we know the uh, this author got this uh, idea from this, uh, act when Jesus went to pray and he came back and found his disciples sleep and he said, hey, what, could you not uh, watch with me for one hour? So speaking of watching, and Paul even said, praying always with all, all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So to pray correctly, one must be mentally alert and vigilant. As we know, we talk about, uh, you know, Missionary Pat even mentioned sometimes when you pray, the enemy will try to interrupt that prayer. It could be with the thought. It could be with something that, that, that's going on in the house. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Jesus said, enter into your private closet, you know, and close the door uh, so you have less distractions. But we got to be mentally alert and vigilant. It says, much prayer is hampered by dull, drowsy frame of mind. That means we can't pray when we sleep. That's why it's not good to pray, try to have your prayer time at the last part of your day because your body physically is exhausted. And then sometimes you'll find yourself falling off to sleep. It says, we must make, our, make ourselves aware of the various ways Satan seeks to hinder the effectiveness of our prayer. So intercession. And we talked about this. So what is intercession? Triple bonus question. To stand, to stand in. Stand in place for, some, for someone else or like uh, Christ's intercession, us for us to the, to the Father. Okay, that's, that's a good example. 
Anybody uh, else? Well, well, Jesus himself is an intercessor for us. That's right. The so, Bible. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're saying that, then that gives us an answer. And uh, uh, Deacon Edwards uh, basically said it. Yeah, the Bible says that he's the mediator between God and man. He stands in between us and he intercedes on our behalf. Um, going back to the courtroom drama, the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. You know, so Satan standing there saying, see what they did? I told you they was going to do that. And Jesus saying, I die for that, Your Honor. That's right. So he is the intercessor, the great intercessor, our great high priest. Amen. So intercessory prayer, the author said, it is, it, it, it is God's method for involving his followers more completely in his totality of his plan. Said, and I like this part, the way he puts it here. He says that no other way can the believer become as fully involved with God's work, especially with the work of God's evangelism and intercessory prayer. It goes on to say, we stand, uh, we stand at God's sides working together with him in the task of redeeming others. So, you know, even, even though it may not be, uh, a prayer for the lost lost souls. It could be prayer for somebody that is sick, pray for somebody that's going through something, but we are actually involved in the work and God's work along with him. And, and not only that, we're bringing God into that situation because we're interceding on behalf of that individual. Amen. All right. Any other, anybody else? All right. So we're going to go on to petition. Petition, anybody who wants to take a, a shot at down the act of personal supplication. What is petition? Making our request known unto God. Making our request known, petitioning. That's that's a that's a that's a verse, a Bible verse there. Oh. <laughs> but you <laughs> You're right. But the petition is making our request known. In the book, it says here, petition is the aspect of prayer given over to asking God for specific personal things. And there's nothing wrong with asking for personal things. It's, it, it, it's not unselfish, uh, you know, to ask for personal things or, or spiritual blessings or or material blessings. You know, God said He will provide every need according to His riches and glory. And Jesus even said, "Ask and it shall be given unto you." You have not because you ask not. But we got to be careful that we're not asking just to, uh, uh, as James said, asking to miss that we may consume it you know, on, on, on our own selves for, you know, uh, in a way that it's not really glorifying God. Um, but the Bible gave an example here, or the author did it, gave an example of Jabez, right? It says, Jabez called on God of Israel saying, <clears throat> oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. And Pastor mentioned about that last week when we were talking about this. Sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for. Uh, but anyway, at that yeah. And that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not give, that it may not grieve me. <clears throat> and it said that God granted him his request. So Jabez was pretty much specific about what he what he asked for, what he wanted, and God gave it to him. So, but again, your petition must be sincere. We can't we can't ask amiss. We can't ask, uh, you know, with the wrong attitude. Um, we must, and, and it goes on to say, we must not hesitate, declare, declare as Jabez did, bless me indeed. Uh, and it gave an example also that Jesus, when he faced uh, with the blind man, and all of us know that story, when he cried out, oh, son of David, you know, have mercy upon me. And Jesus said, you know, hey, what, what should I have me to do, you know, unto thee? And the blind man said, hey, I, 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 would, I would like to receive my sight. So be specific. Be sincere because yeah. is an expression of helplessness, which it is. You know, when we asking God for things that we asking God for things that we can't provide for our own self. Yeah, I, I was thinking about a natural petition. You know, many names are written down and mm -hmm. given to that authority that you're trying to make appeal to or to appeal to. And then here is talking about a personal uh, petition. But when you read uh, what the author has here, because petition is an expression of helplessness, it should be uh, present each day in the devotional hour. 
So we see it, it says, Jesus taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. He was teaching a group. Um, you, can, you can say us, you can say me, <clears throat> but you're basically asking for a petition of what you need for that day. That's the, that's the part you want to look at. Give mm -hmm. us this day, this day, our daily bread. You're petitioning that you get everything. And that daily bread is, is not just food. That's everything you yeah. need. Yeah, that's, that, that's complete provision. You know, um, protection, whatever it is that you need. Um, and, and not only that, it, and the reason why Jesus said, give us this day, because tomorrow ain't promising none of us. Tomorrow's not promised. Yeah, so got to be specific, be sincere. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, he said that he will, if our ways please him, he'll do what? Give us the desires of our heart. So God wants to bless us. So Lord, bless me indeed. All right. So Thanksgiving, the act of expressing appreciation. Um, and, it, and it explains in a little in detail that Thanksgiving differs from praise and that praise focuses on who God is, whereas Thanksgiving focuses on what God has specifically done for us. So it gave us some examples on many things that we can, and, it, and it, the author looks at it as us blessing God, you know, um, uh, giving thanks for what the things that he've done. It says Thanksgiving helps us to focus on God's faithfulness and might be well be labeled as confession of blessings. Um, so if we look at a list that he, he, uh, that he put down here, different things that we can uh, confess spiritual blessings was one of them. What specific, what specific spiritual blessing has God given you recently? So that's just something to ponder on. So when we, in the, you know, and like I said, the author is, is just kind of trying to generate, get us to, to ponder and think about some things in prayer to help us be more effective in prayer because in, in all of our prayer, I'm sure all of us always give God thanks for a lot of different things, but some things, you know, we may leave out. Um, you know, of course, we always bless them for the material blessings, uh, things uh, mainly uh, the mater many material blessings God has generously provided. And let me see if I can go to the next page without it jumping all over the screen. Oh, they did it. The third one was confess physical blessings. You know, we should thank God specifically for good health. I believe in John chapter, uh, book of John, uh, I'm sorry, third John, if I'm not mistaken, where he, he spoke of uh, a friend of his, I think it was Gaius, where he, where he was saying, you know, he wished above all things that he will prosper and be in good health, even as his soul, soul prosper. So, you know, we want to thank God specifically for good health. I thank God for the reasonable portion of health and strength that I got. You know, every day is not the best day. You know, I might have a little aches here and there, you know, uh, and from time to time, but guess what? There's a lot of people in worse conditions than, than I am. So uh, fourth, confess past blessings, things that God has, uh, has done for us, you know, in the past. Uh, you know, think, think that, you know, some things that God has done. You know, we always say that, you you know, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. So if we got that testimony, we can always thank God for the things he's done in the past. And finally, it says to confess external blessing. You know, there's some things that not, may not be directly related to you as a blessing, but, you know, it could have been somebody that you've been praying for, for salvation. And they came, came and, you know, they surrendered their life to the Lord. Somebody that you could have been praying for uh, to get a job or to be to be healed, you know, or a situation that somebody is going through, you know, and you've been praying and praying and fasting for that individual. It may not be directly related to you, but guess what? You want to thank God for answering that prayer. Amen. I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, yes is it good for us to pray? Go back to the, the one you were just talking about. What was the topic? What was the? I think, I'm sorry. Don't go back. I know you don't mess up. But it's good. Um, I, I meant to ask this in, in accessory prayer. Um, 
if you had a sinner, a sinner man or sinner, a friend that was a sinner, and they were very successful in their life in terms of business, just working or whatever, um, would you pray for their continued success? Would that be a priority, uh, praying that they continue to be successful? Or would you pray for their, them to accept the Lord Jesus Christ? I know y'all gonna say, man, that's obvious answer. Mm -hmm. would you, would you, in, in assessor, do you pray for people, give people Godspeed that don't believe in God, that don't acknowledge God? And as soon as we answer, we're gonna go to scripture. Well, I think I think you should pray for them, um, for them, and talk to them about the Lord, even if they're unbeliever. But you might they see what God's doing in your life, they might have a mindset change and start following yes. the Lord. But but let me okay, so let me be a little clearer. They are successful materially in the world. They're successful every every standard of success on this earth in terms of material things they have. They got the big house, the big car, uh, uh, big bank account. They have all these things, but they don't go to church. They're not, they don't even believe in God, but they're your next door neighbor. They're your cousin, they're your uncle, they're, they're your uh, associate at work. Um, uh, would you- But my thing is you gain the world, but loses your soul. Yeah. So my thing, yeah, I would still pray for them to come to the Lord. Okay, that, yeah, yeah. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. That's the answer. Okay. But I'm saying, is it wrong for us not to pray for them to continue to have success in the world? I'm not saying pray against it. What I mean, how would you approach somebody that has everything they believe they need? And they and some of them must say they say, Oh, I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I, I I would I would I would uh, continue to pray that they do have success because the Bible says God reigns on the just and, and the unjust. So I can't stop what God is doing in their life. I just hope that uh, and pray that that God shows them who He is in their life so they they can be saved. Wait 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 wait. wait. So this sinner man or woman. Let's go to scripture. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but while you. While you're going to scripture, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just I got you know an instance where you know God had revealed some things to me, you know, on that same matter when I was uh, back in one of the post offices that I worked in. Uh, this carrier came in that morning and basically said he lost his sight in one of his eyes and he couldn't see. He was up all night, you know, trying to figure he didn't know what was going on, and uh, you know, but you know. I was, you know, basically wanted to, to pray for him. And as I was praying, not, you know, directly for him, but, pray, you know, calling his name out in prayer, um, the scripture came to mind where uh, Jesus healed this man with, uh, I think, with the withered hand. No, no, I'm sorry. They had the, the, the paralegic man and we told him to take up his bed and walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, but before he did that in front of the Pharisees, he told he told the man that thy sins be forgiven. And the Pharisees got mad. And then Jesus said, you know, take up your bed and walk. And the guy got up and, and walked away. And he, the question that he asked, which is easier, uh, that his sins be forgiven or that he be made whole? And the, the moral to that story is if we're praying for people, uh, you know, based off of their request and not right. for their soul, right. they can still be, be successful but die and go to hell. That's so right. Jesus was making the point what to me, that's what I got from it. What, like I said, he, he kind of revealed it to me back then is that we should be praying for the soul of the individual, you know, that's and it. as minister Isaac said, God is still going to reign on the just or the unjust. Regardless, Absolutely. we're not praying. Against, Absolutely. We're not praying against that. We're just praying that that person's soul be saved because they can die as sister Wanda said, they can gain the whole world and die and lose their soul. Everybody hit on all the points. The, the one thing is the Bible tells us if they come with any other type of doctrine, don't give them Godspeed. In other words, don't pray for 
that thing that they believe prospers them and their soul is lost. You pray for their soul. It tells you in, in uh, let's go to second John real quick. Second John, it ain't gonna take us long because everybody hit on it. But it's important to, to understand what to pray for even when you're interceding for someone. First person get to it, you can read it or if I get to it. It says, uh, 2 John 1, 10, it says, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. I'm not praying that you be blessed with more houses and more money. I'm praying for your soul. And I'm not praying against those things either. Y'all get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I'm not praying against that they don't prosper, that they don't, I'm uh, saying in material goods, but uh, Elder Melton hit it right on the head. You pray for their soul. Pray for their soul that God saves them. That's the only point I wanted to make is that we have to understand. People, yeah, you. I know you all run again, uh, up against people who say, hey, uh, hey, how you doing? You say, well, I'm blessed, highly favored, blah, blah, blah. Hey, vitamin church, man. I ain't got time for no church, man. I got to go hustle, make this dollar. Yeah, but pray for me. <laughs> but, but pray for me. That Pray for me about my job situation. Pray for me that, hey, man, I need a blessing, man. That's why I'm working seven days a week. No, you're not working seven days a week because of that. But anyway, I'm sorry. I don't want to preempt the teaching. But intercessory prayer is very, very important. Understanding, just as uh, it tells us, we, we don't know what to pray for. So if we don't know what to pray for for ourselves, we don't know what to pray for for others. So we have to be, going back to what you were teaching, very specific. Mm -hmm. in our prayers mm -hmm. our prayer Amen. is a miss God give them no rest I pray hey. I pray that every unsaved person get no rest until they mm -hmm. are rested that's right doesn't it say the strong should bear the affirmities of the weak yeah I say like Kaya sure <laughs> all right so we're going to try to get through this this time so singing we talked about singing the act of melodic worship so the psalmist talked about serve the lord with gladness come before him his presence with singing so this author gave an example of of scripture that uh paul wrote i believe he talked about uh um uh spoke of spiritual songs uh, he was speaking of songs that originated in, in the believer's heart because we know back in the Old Testament, and, and, and we call it the New Testament during our time, but during Paul's time, it was just scriptures. Right. <laughs> so there wasn't a New Testament. So the bottom line is they didn't have hymn books back then. They didn't have songs. Was, so, you know, they probably had some, some, of, some of David's songs, but not many. It wasn't like they had a, a publishing machine where they can print off copies you know, left and right, like we can with Bibles nowadays. So these were songs that were generated or originated from the believer's heart. And it gave an example in Acts where Paul and Silas sang praises unto God, you know, says, you know, so these, these songs that uh, just generated or these praises that they sang just generated in their heart while they was in jail, you know, now, again, uh, you know, I, I like the author's idea. If God gives you a song to sing, to praise him, that originated in your heart and, and nobody has published or, or owns the rights to that song uh, that we always say nowadays when we're playing something on Facebook. But, you know, that's great. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, there's nothing wrong with singing praises if, if it's a song that may not have generated in your heart. But it's in your heart. It's in your spirit. And God has, has, you know, has laid it on your heart. Sometimes there's songs that, that help uplift our spirits and we sing to the depths of our heart unto the Lord. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with those songs. But again, incorporating these things into our prayer helps us with, in, in our prayer. And it gives us some theme songs, some things to pray about. Um, again, I can share this with you guys afterwards if you want but again this is just a real condensed version the book is actually a small book it's not really long but it's a lot more material in there that can be a blessing to you 
and uh, I don't want you to miss out on anything. Uh, but again, and it's not a real expensive book either. But uh, again, it did have some theme songs here, you know, songs of praise, songs of power and mercy, songs of thanksgiving, uh, songs of God's name, songs of God's word and songs of, of my heart. And, and it gives you scripture references to each one of those in the book of Psalm. So let's go on to meditation. <clears throat> any questions, any, any comments on the songs? I know some of us feel like we can't sing. It doesn't matter to God. God, when he hears your voice, uh, it's, it's sweet melody. Because I know I can't sing, so, you know. <laughs> All right. Meditation, the act of spiritual evaluation. The act of spiritual evaluation called meditation helps the believers to, to discover how to apply all the truths of God has revealed during prayer. No meditation is really vital unless it leaves us with something to which we can return during the day's business and find, uh, find it helpful there. So when we meditate and we, we should be meditating on something that's going to help us, it's got to be a benefit to it. You know, um, people meditate on a lot of different things, you know, but that's not our purpose of meditation. So we're not, you know, some people, they meditate on certain things to help their basketball game or to help their football game, help them re remember certain things. But we're meditating on something that's going to be, be uh, more beneficial to us than that. And it's in fact, uh, in, in Joshua, somebody can get Joshua one and eight real quick. Um, the Old Testament defines the word meditation is to mutter or to muse. This suggests a silent inner study of some spiritual matter. This is the essence of the meaning of meditate in Joshua one and eight. Did somebody get it? I got it. Let me read it. Yes, sir. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Is that Joshua 1 and 8? Oh, you said Joshua? Yeah. Joshua 1 and 8. Uh, this book of law That's shall not mind. depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So as, as Joshua 1 and 8 tells us, this value of meditation, scripture meditation provides the believer with spiritual benefits received through no other means. Personal inner peace is but one of these benefits. In Isaiah 26 and 3, it is, it is after all in meditation that we rise above ourselves and the world, and, and again, focus the purpose of seeing God's plan in the proper perspective. So we're not focusing on ourselves in meditation. And it gives us some- focus on meditation, you got the verses. I say that picture, I can be able to write it down. But, but also, also uh, when we read the book of Psalms, mm -hmm. uh, you, you might see that sometimes people don't even read it. Uh, at the end it says, Selah. Yeah. Basically, yep. that's a part of the meditation because meditation is also uh, saying, think on it, reflect on it, what yep. is being said. So meditation is, is part of thinking and reflecting on what has just been said. That yes, helps sir. you to study it and get it uh, internally. So, Yeah, so if we think about a song, right, and, and we hear songs that are being sung, and after a certain verse or chorus, sometimes all you hear is music, right? And that's the pause. That's what the Selah is. It's that pause in the Psalms where you actually, like Pastor just said, meditate, think about what was just said. Um, and, and it helps you to, to, to understand what was just said a lot better. And of course, uh, it gives us some examples here, focus meditation on God himself, uh, on God's word, uh, on the works of God, on past victories and positive thoughts. Um, the, and, and there's scriptures to go along with it to kind of help you in meditation. I say you have to meditate on all of those during your hour of meditate or your time of meditation, but you know, it gives you a theme or something to, to meditate on that can help you throughout the day. All right, listening, we're almost there. The act of mental absor absorption. Many centuries earlier, 
And I like this uh, many centuries earlier, Sol Solomon Penn, be not rash with, with thy words and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven and thou upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. So why do we have two ears and one mouth? As Judge Judy would so say, you can have two less. ears and one mouth, so you can hear some more. So you can hear more than what you can, what you what you need to say. Mm -hmm. He just quote Judge Judy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard that you. Yeah. So you can oh, Judge listen Judy. more. Yeah, but but again, Just you know, sometimes blessed. sometimes we can get caught up so much in prayer that we're asking and asking and asking, and you know, we got a lot going on in prayer, but we don't take time to stop and listen. So that's all the author is talking about here, using Ecclesiastes. Says some might wonder how listening differs from from either waiting or meditation. As stated, waiting is the is the thoughtful focus, attention on God and His and in a love relationship, it is a time of resting silently in God's love. Other than, on the other hand, meditation is very careful exploration on particular spiritual theme. Though closely related to both, listening is an element of prayer that stands alone. To listen in prayer is to mentally absorb divine instructions from God concerning specific matters for that day. Um, Listening implies confidence that God truly desires to speak to us. It also serves to move, uh, move our devotional habits still further from our emphasis on self. So it takes our focus off of ourself because now we're listening. We're waiting to hear from God. What is God, what is God trying to say to us today? What is it that God, you know, sometimes say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Isn't that what, uh, what uh, um, uh, uh, Eli said? Yes. Or Samuel was Samuel when uh, Eli was uh, when Samuel was a, was a little boy, uh -huh. and, and and he heard the Lord call him, uh, and he ran into Eli. And Eli he told Eli, "Huh? What'd you say?" <laughs> I'm just paraphrasing. And Eli said, I ain't, "I ain't say nothing." And Samuel went back, and Eli realized that that God was calling on him, and he said, "Lord, Lord, speak, thy servant here." So sometimes God's trying to speak our attention but sometimes we got too much going on that we can't hear all right so individual guidance from god received in prayer is a vital importance in how easy it is to listen to our own voice pressing you to do the selfish things but it is the voice of god the inner voice we must learn to hear it's easy for us to kind of get get distracted from our own thoughts you know our own selfish things or how we want to do things um, but we need to let God direct us. All right. And we're going to close out with praise. So we're right back at the end. We started with praise. We're ending with praise. So praise has now come full circle. And we find ourselves again at the pr at praise. Worship to seal, seal all praying, all praying. We begin with the act of adoration and we will end with the act, act of magnification. Just not only, just not only taught Jesus, I'm sorry, Jesus not only taught us to be our, our prayer with praise, our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, but he also taught us to end our praying with praise, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, amen. And that's Matthew 6, 9, and 13. So we vocally magnify the nature of God. To magnify the Lord's name with praise is to put a, a spiritual magnification glass to all the God is and declare these discoveries aloud. Nothing could provide so meaningful a conclusion to praying as a statement of the greatness of God. With the psalmist, we declare great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And that's Psalms 48 and 1. And it says, as prayer concludes, we praise God because it is, it has been his greatness that has made our devotional hour possible. The Bible says we can do nothing without him. So even with our devotional hour, our time of prayer, we couldn't do it without him. So we uh, praise for that. When, when, when we begin praying, we recognize God's glory in all of its splendor and beauty. 
Now we restate, uh, we, uh, we restate our case for worship. In these final moments, we add faith to our praise. Jesus, Jesus taught us to conclude our prayer with the expression, amen. It means so, so be it, or it is done. A student of Greek told me that amen could actually be translated, God, our King is truly, is, is trustworthy. To say amen in prayer is to express confidence that God has heard our petition. Do we leave, when we leave our prayer, do we feel confident that God has heard our petition? Yes, we should. Yes. We feel yes. that our prayer has got beyond the ceiling. Yes. We should. We should. So even even saying amen, we should, we, we should, as this thing said, you know, uh, uh mark this, make your amen strong. Mm -hmm. So that act of confidence, knowing that God heard your prayer. Sure. Never doubting, never doubting that God is surely listening to you. This is what mm -hmm. amen that I know with certainty that this prayer has been heard by God. Amen. Make your mm -hmm. amen. All right, it is now 8.31. Pastor, I do apologize for a minute. This is good stuff. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. It's exhilarating. Yes, yes. We thank the Lord. Um, I just wanted to say uh, we have a fellowship at 2 o'clock after morning service on... Um, Sunday, don't want to forget that. But on tomorrow night, we have TNP Thursday night praise, and we also have the Thursday night corporate prayer uh, at eight o'clock. So seven o'clock, please join Minister Isaac uh, for the uh, TNP, and also again eight o'clock for the corporate prayer. We thank the Lord for all those that joined on tonight. Uh, we thank God for Elder Melton taking this uh, um, charge to do uh, Bible study on tonight. It's a good subject, good material. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, Amen. In, in fact, I would, I forgot the name of the book, The Hour That Changed the World. Yeah, The Hour That Changed the World. I have it downstairs. I haven't read it in years to be a perfectly blunt. I haven't read it in, in many years. But um, we thank the Lord. It's, it's good to get books to read the supplement, but the greatest book is the Bible. Yes. If it's not uh, underlined or foundational or aligned with the word of God, you might want to leave it alone. But this one is. That's, that's good material there. So you might want to check that book out. Um, very good book. Anything that helps you in your prayer life, help you in your, your Christian walk. But we thank the Lord. <laughs> Yeah. I sure was on, Pastor. <laughs> I, was, I was saying it, Pastor. They got a, a new version on, uh, or a, a, not a new version, but updated yeah. on Amazon. And I think I've like read writing, so that's new. It's not really expensive. Yes. And it's a really good book. And I, I like to buy the digital version because I can I can take it with me wherever I go phone, tablet, computer. Yeah. So we're, we're not trying to. Sell so Mr. Eastman's book. It's very good material yeah. for your study. You invest in yourself. Uh, don't buy just anything. You might want to vet it through someone that's more experienced in, in, in Christian um, literature and, and, and Bible instead of just buying anything and everything, you know. Uh, I'm not buying anything that does not line up with the word of God right. or stretch the word, make it a lie. Uh, we thank the Lord. All right. We thank God for everyone online. Everybody was lively tonight, even though I didn't hear from you, heard somebody snoring. No, I'm just kidding. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. It's probably me breathing hard from not eating. Um, we thank the Lord. I'm not going to even see. Somebody think I'm talking about them, but we thank the Lord. Take us out, Elder. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm stopping. <laughs>
All right, we thank God for everybody that participated. Hey, for those that are watching by Facebook, again, we thank God for you uh, and, and uh, appreciate you joining us on tonight. Pray that you got a blessing from it. Um, also, if you like to give to our ministry, you can do so by going to the GiveLify app. If you have the app on your phone or tablet, you can go to GiveLify, search for Partake of Church of Christ Ministries, and we thank you in advance for your liberal giving. And just in case you didn't have the app, uh, we do have a website, uh, www.partakerschurch.org. You can go there and click on Give Now, and it will take you to GiveLify, where you can be a blessing to our ministry. And we pray that God will return it to you a hundredfold. All right. With that said, we're going to pray and dismiss. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your love and kindness, your grace and your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for those that participated uh, and joined us on tonight, whether it be by Facebook or Zoom, God. We pray, Lord God, that you will uh, uh, touch them, Lord God, and encourage them, Lord God, through your word and through by your spirit to uh, spend more time in prayer, Lord God, and fellowship with you, Lord God, commune with you, Lord God, because we know without a shadow of a doubt, Lord God, that prayer changes everything. It doesn't just change things, but it changes everything, God. And we just give you uh, praise and honor and glory, Lord God, for the gift of being able to pray, Lord God, and to come before you, Lord God, to come before your throne of grace, Lord God. And we just ask you, Lord God, to continue to bless our pastor, first lady, continue to use them for your glory. Watch over us, Lord God, until we meet again. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Bless everybody. Enjoy. God bless. Good night. Good night.